to it. It is now 11.30, I'm a couple hours late, but good thing you guys can watch it live or not live when you review everything that I'm gonna teach you today. So what it is, is we are working on chapter five and it's called Contracts. I'm working on a book called Principles, Real Estate Principles. And for those of you who are getting ready to take your California state exam, this is a really great book that seems to have a lot of the information that's gonna be on your state exam. So a lot of exciting things happening and teaching you how to get past your real estate exam. So this weekend I taught a cram course where a lot of the people were sharing information as to why they felt that the class was, the test was difficult. Good morning. I know it's a little bit late, but I'm trying to do what I can. My mom had a little bit of emergency this morning. So, you know, family has to be first. So actually family is second, God is first, family is second, and teaching you guys is right up there at the very top. So I'm working out of this book, it's, it's called Principles, it's page 128, and it has a lot of information on contracts. Unfortunately, the contracts do change a lot, so you have to keep up to date with it, and that's one of the reasons I am a member of the California Association of Real Tours. Good morning, how you doing? So are you getting ready to take your test? Because I'm doing this at a different time, so I don't know if I'm gonna have different people today and how you guys are gonna react because I am a couple hours late due to a family emergency. However, we're gonna get jumping into there and see what we have to know. Good morning, how are you? So I'm working out of a book called Real Estate Principles and today we're talking about contracts and the California Residential Purchase Agreement and escrow instructions. It does say across the top and escrow instructions. So it's really cool about this book is it has a little section on highlights and then it jumps into the contract. Now in this book, like most other books, they're a little bit behind where they have the 10 page purchase contract. We are now up to a 16 page purchase contract and we had some more changes. So changes happen a lot and that's why you want to make sure that you join an office that is involved with CAR because CAR will educate you constantly on what's happening with the contracts. However, for your real estate exam, you have to know stuff about contracts. The other day I talked about void, voidable, valid contracts. You have to know the difference between all those different ones. So if you watch my other contracts videos, you'll understand that a void contract was never valid in the first place. You, under, you have to understand that. So if a, if a contract was done for an illegal purpose, it wasn't valid in the first place, so it's void. If you have somebody go under contract who's not allowed to contract, like somebody who's 16 years old, and they're not allowed to contract, but they do, and you get, go into escrow, then it's void because it was never valid in the first place. Another quick review is every contract has to have four essentials of a valid contract. If it's missing even one, then it is void. Now, let's say that you're under contract and you've been under contract for a while and you find out that something happened where you, something was misrepresented to you, well then it's a voidable contract. So you can watch the video, I'm sorry, my collar's all weirded out. Um, the video before this, we talked about void, voidable, and then I have a contracts video that I think there's like 19,000 people have watched, so go ahead and feel free to watch that video. If you can't find it, text me and I'll send you the video on contracts also the video on finance. So I have two videos on finance, one on contract that people are watching that's really helping them pass the California real estate exam. However, I'm gonna jump into some of the stuff on the California contracts. This is California specific. I am a California broker. Hi, are you doing ML, M, any MLO cram courses? It's funny you should ask, because guess what? We have one coming up, not this week. So this week, tonight, tonight from 6 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. is our cram course class. It's not really a cram course. It's an exam prep to where I'm teaching you everything you need to know about taking the test, and not only that, everything you need to know about how the test works, because there's certain things we're finding out about the test that you really need to know. And that class is four days. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, from 6 to 9.30 p.m. That starts tonight. And then next week, not this week, but next week, we're going to work with the MLOs. We're doing a exam prep for MLOs, but we only have one person signed up so far and I need to get people signed up sooner than later with the mortgage class because with that class, I actually have to order books. So it would be really helpful if you think you're going to take the mortgage exam to let me know when you're going to take it so we can get the class together and order the books. 
So, because the books are not cheap. How about that? So, page 128 on California contracts. Remember, then sign up. You've got to text me and sign up. Or um, Arlene could help you sign up. My phone number is 714-745-6348. So, I think my phone number is all over the place. All you have to do is text me. Let me know what class you're trying to sign up for. You just completed the 20-hour. Where did you take the 20-hour? And how much did you learn? Because the, the, the exam prep is really, really good. And I have some hidden videos for the exam prep once you sign up for the class. So here we go. Let's do this. It says California residential purchase contract and escrow instructions. It has that information on there. Include fixed time periods for delivery of disclosures and removal of contingencies. So you have time frames on your purchase contract of things that you have to do. So your disclosures usually have to be out to the other party within five to seven days. Seven days is the time frame, but I would say get it done. So if you are on the listing side, sit down, do all your disclosures with your seller, either when you sign the listing contract or make an appointment for the following day or so, so that you can have those disclosures in your hand. When you get into contract with a buyer, you can just zip them on over to that side and get those disclosures out, okay? The other thing is the agent visual inspection is part of those disclosures. So you want to make sure that you get out there, do your agent visual inspection, have your client sign it and get it to the other side. So we have time frames that we have to meet. Once you go under contract, the clock starts ticking and inside the purchase contract are the words, time is of the essence. One of the California state exam questions is where do you find what purchase, what contract do you find time is of the essence in? And that is in the purchase contract. So we have time frames and we have time frames for removing contingencies. If there's a contingency on your contract, there's a certain time amount that you have to remove the contingencies. So let's see what number two is. That was number one. Allow buyers to cancel within a certain time without first requesting the seller to make repairs. So there's time frames as to when your buyer can cancel and when they cannot cancel. You can't just put your client into escrow and allow them to cancel because they found another house. Because that happens and there was a lawsuit that happened where unfortunately the real estate agent told the buyer, oh, we could put offers in on as many houses as you want to and then whichever one we get, we can make a decision. Well, what happened was the buyer decided on a particular house and then a couple days later, one of the other houses they liked better was available and they canceled this one. Well, they canceled the first one without really having the, the legal ability to do so. So because they didn't cancel it correctly, the buyer lost their deposit and it was around $70,000. Not only did they lose that deposit, but they had another $30,000 of attorney fees. So you are in a position where you are helping somebody buy a home or sell a home and we're at that fine line where we're not attorneys but we are licensed real estate professionals so we should know what we're doing so that we don't lose our clients money because it's really I've never lost my clients money but I'll tell you one thing I never want to lose my clients money how about that so it allows the buyer to cancel within a specific amount of time it requires written removal of contingencies so you have to put in writing that you're removing the contingencies it requires sellers to give notice to the buyer to perform before the seller may cancel. So the seller can't just cancel out escrow and be all, okay, well, you haven't done what you're supposed to do, so I'm canceling. The seller has to give the buyer a notice to perform. If the buyer hasn't done something that they're supposed to do and removed contingencies, then the seller side is going to give you a notice to perform. You, so let's say that you have a loan contingency. And even though your loan was approved when you went in, it still has certain things that have to be done. So when you have an approved loan, then you got to find the home. Then you got to get an appraisal. Then you got to make sure that the loan docs go through and everything goes through. So let's say the appraisal doesn't come through. So you have a contingency on the appraisal. Well, normally the appraisal contingency is around 17 days. Well, let's say 22 days go by and the buyer has not removed the contingency on the appraisal yet. Well, just because they're not ready to do it, the time frame is 17 days. If at that time they have not removed the contingency for the appraisal, they need, need to make a decision to go forward or to cancel. And if they're not going to do anything, the seller has the right to ask the buyer to you know, specifically perform. 
If they don't perform, then the seller is going to give a notice to perform. And if they don't respond to that, then the contract can be canceled out. So you have to follow step by step what you're supposed to do with each contract. And the purchase contract is the longest one that you have to know the most information. Now, one of the places you can find a lot of information on your purchase contract is number one, the CAR website, the California Association of Realtor website. So go to that website and pull up the purchase contract and read it. The other place is on YouTube. Try it. I think it's Trico. You can look for Trico or Tri Counties Board of Realtors. Um, you can find our website there. And John Jarnelli and Linda DeStefano went through the first huge change where we went from 10 pages to 16 pages. You guys have to know that contract because you have to explain it to your buyers as you're filling it out and giving them a copy, okay? Very important to understand the purchase contract, okay? Because not only as the buyer's agent, but as the seller's agent, because you're gonna receive it from the buyer's agent if you're the seller's agent, and you have to understand what they're asking for and what the contract says. And I know eventually you guys that are coming off and on are gonna give me some thumbs up because I just saw them go in, okay. So number, so number one was there's time frames. Number two, the buyer can cancel in a certain amount of time. Number three, it requires a written removal of contingencies. Number four, it requires the seller to give the buyer a notice to perform before they go ahead and cancel out the buyer. Gives the, let's see, gives the seller contractual right if the buyer does not meet certain contractual ob obligations. So the seller has a right to cancel if you don't do what you're supposed to do. Refers to a separate agreement for broker compensation. So guess what? Broker compensation, that's how much you're getting paid. So in the listing contract, it says how much you're gonna get paid. And then on that, with the listing contract, the seller's agent goes ahead and puts how much the buyer's compensation is. That's on the MLS, you'll find it if you go all the way down to the left, it says B-A-C, buyer's agent compensation. So it shows you how much you're gonna get paid on the multiple listing service of the property you're looking at. Going on, so there's a separate agreement. And what's gonna happen is the listing is the separate agreement that says how much you're gonna get paid. Then when you open escrow, escrow will send out, yes they will, they'll send out commission agreements and everybody has to sign it. Your broker has to sign, this is how much we agree to get after he checks the MLS, okay? So you wanna make sure you get paid for the work you do. Then it says no pre-allocation of costs to cure problems with wood destroying pests. So with the wood destroying pests, the structural pest inspection, a lot of people think that legally you have to do the termite inspection and report and clearance, okay? Depends on the type of loan you're getting and depends on how much protection your client, you're gonna protect your client because technically a termite report should be done on a house every two years. And approximately every two years, if there's termites, you're gonna go ahead and, ma and maintain the property or maintenance the property. But most homeowners don't do that. Most homeowners only do their termite inspection and clearance when they're selling a house. Now, when was the last time the house was sold? And can we see that termite report? So usually the termite guys tell me it's about every two years that you should have it checked and you should have it cleared. On the termite report, now on the new purchase contract, it's kind of weird because you really have to look for it. And what you write in is you write in that you want a termite inspection, but if you don't write that you want a termite clearance, if you just want, I, I want a termite inspection, if you get a termite inspection and there's termites and you didn't write on the contract that you want a clearance, then you're not getting a clearance from the seller. And you have to be careful with that because that thing seems to change every so often because original contracts used to say termite inspection and clearance. Then they changed it. And a lot of people didn't know that. And they did termite inspection and report. So you had to ask for the clearance separately. If the lender sees that you're asking for a termite report, then the lender's gonna request to see it and they're gonna want a clearance. So if you didn't ask for the clearance, it could cost you a lot of money, trust me. So I had one where I was actually representing the buyer and the seller, that's called dual agency. And a lot of people don't think they can do dual agency because it's like a divorce attorney being on both sides. Well, if you're a good divorce attorney, you could do damn well doing that. So I feel I'm pretty good doing both sides. So I talk to the seller, I get what they wanna do, and I talk to the buyer and I get what they wanna do, and I, I do what's best for both parties. So 
um, with this one I had, we wrote up the contract and it said termite. I asked him and he said he wanted a termite report. He said inspection and report. And I marked the box. He didn't ask for a clearance. And um, we kind of talked about it, but he didn't put it in writing. And I told him, I said, you wanted me to mark the box, but you didn't ask for the clearance. You just asked for, and you, and we talked about the clearance because the house was a fixer upper and he knew the house was going to need a lot of work. And it was as is period. It was a short sale. So the seller couldn't afford to do anything. And the bank agreed on a certain price. So when you're doing a dual agency on that, your hands are kind of tied because if the bank's not going to pay anything and the seller doesn't have any money, you're getting the house as is all accepted the way it is. And so we had the termite report done and there's $15,000 worth of work. And he's like, well, the bank's going to do a clearance, right? And I'm like, no, the bank, <laughs> the, the owner owes the bank a million dollars and they're giving you the house for six sixty eight. dollars No, they're not going to do a clearance. So I told him that and I explained it to him and I said, you know what, since I'm representing the seller and I'm representing the buyer, I will pay for the house to be tented, but I'm not going to pay for all the eaves, which was $15,000. So you, you, you're going to be negotiating all the time. And when you're working with the contracts, whoa, it's a lot of work. People don't think it is. So um, let's see. Destroying pests. Use, use of addendum requires to accommodate pre-allocated requests. So you have to be really careful with what is in the contract and what you agree for verbally. A lot of people think that if, they, if two real estate agents talk about something, then that's it. They don't have to put it in writing. You've got to put everything in writing, especially once you get into escrow and there might be a change or two once you open escrow. If there's a change or two when you open escrow, you have to put it in writing and you have to put it through escrow so everybody understands if there's a change, what the change is, and everybody agrees. You can't just change anything after you've already opened escrow, okay? Mediation and arbitration. So the purchase contract calls for us to mediate and arbitrate before we try to sue somebody in court because we're always trying to do it in the best interest for all parties. And going to court and suing each other costs a lot of money and time, and you know who knows what's gonna happen during that time. So that's just a quick review of what they said was in the purchase contract, which kind of helped out with you know, te you know teaching you guys the purchase contract. However, like I said, the California Association, they have a website. You can go to that website and look at the purchase contract. You can also go on YouTube and, go and not Google, but search for RPA, Real Estate uh, Residential Purchase Contract, and search for John Jarnelli and Linda DiStefano. They did a six hour class on the purchase contract. You should really know that contract. Um, before taking the test, mm, I don't know. You don't have to know the purchase contract backwards and forwards and inside out for the state exam, but you should know some of the things on it, like time is of the essence and that we have time frames. okay? So the residential purchase agreement, digital or paper. Most people do not print out the purchase contract anymore. We do it online and digitally, okay? But you can't just send a purchase contract to your clients and expect them to read it and understand what it says. Your job as a real estate professional is to go over the purchase contract with your clients, explain the things that you're filling out, like this is the address, this is the legal description, you know, we're going in at this price, we're marking this box because of this, and all the things that we need to fill out in the purchase contract so that you're doing what's best for your client. That's why you have to understand it and they have to understand it. You can't just send them the zip forms and say sign it, because that's not your job. Your job is to explain the contracts and make sure your client understands the purchase forms, okay? And make sure you have an agency agreement form. So the offer and the acceptance with deposit. A promissory note secured by a deed of trust, a post-dated check, or an unsecured promissory, um, promissory note could be used by a buyer as earnest money deposit in a purchase real property. The purchase agreement is the most important contract in the real estate field. The California Residential Purchase Agreement and Joint Escrow Instructions is an offer and a deposit to purchase a specific property on certain terms and conditions. When the seller accepts, the, the acceptance of the buyer's offer is communicated to the buyer, a binding, did you hear those words? A binding contract is formed. So once you have a, an offer and an acceptance, you have a binding contract. Remember those words, you're looking for them on the state exam. Offer and acceptance. Got it? So the seller's acceptance of the buyer's offer is communicated by the buyer. A binding contract is formed. Before this, it is an offer that can be revoked by the buyer. Acceptance is communicated in writing 
um, in person, by mail, or by fax. So on the state exam, they say that you cannot do it in a certain way. The ways you can do it is in person, by mail, or fax. The way you can't do it, which is on the state exam, is if, I think it's telex. So if you see telex, that's the answer on the test that you can't do an offer through. Got it? Okay. So there, you just got a right answer on the state exam. When the seller acceptance of the buyer's offer is communicated to the buyer, a binding contract is formed, so they repeat it in bold print, print so you remember this part. Prior to this, it is an offer that can be revoked by the buyer. In addition, the purchase agreement discloses, as in the listing agreement, the percentage of commission to be paid to the brokers involved. The residential purchase agreement and joint escrow instructions. This forms, bye, have a good day. It, the availability of digital if you are a California Realtor. So if you're a California Realtor, you have zip forms and we can send the forms over. So what you are supposed to do is send the form over to your clients, unless you're gonna be right in front of them, go over the contract with your clients, talk to them about what they want filled out, and then send it again to them by email and have them look at it, see if there's any changes they want of course, if you're in front of them, you can make the changes right there. Then once everything is agreed on and your buyer is happy with how you wrote the contract, then you go ahead and you zip form it over there to them uh, and you'll get a DocuSign and they'll be able to sign it by electri you know, electrically or I by email, however you wanna say that. They'll be able to do that. Once they sign it, it will come back to you. You'll sign it. Every, every, once all the signatures are there, then everybody will get the fully executed contract. Now make sure you understand that a fully executed contract is when it is signed by all parties. Now on the state exam, it asks you, when do you, um, when do you go ahead and say that you, know, you have to give them a copy? You always give people a copy of what they sign immediately. So as soon as, and on the state exam, it says at the time of signing. Got that? At the time of signing. So. Trying to get through some pages for you guys. I think this was a lot of really good information. I'm gonna to try to finish around 25 to 30 minutes so that it's a nice short contracts information so that you'll have some extra good stuff for your state exam. So going on, it says, um, when using pre-printed forms, because you are gonna be using pre-printed forms, the handwritten parts have control over printed parts and all corrections must be initialed by both parties. Traditional paper school versus the ever-evolving school of digital. Your client should dictate the method of which they want to fill out and complete the forms. So if your client wants you to print the forms, um, that's kind of weird because they're probably not going to do that because everything's so digital that once we send it to them, they're able to digitally sign it. And then, and then in turn, we're able to digitally send it to the other side. Now, the way that real estate has changed and it has evolved through the years has changed dramatically because back in the day, and there's a lot of stuff. So the reason, you know, I hate to say, take the cram course, take the cram course. The reason you really have to take an exam prep is because on the real estate exam, you have things that are how we did it back in the day. And you have things that are how we do it now. The way we do it now is totally different. And there's some questions as to how we used to do it. For example, it says when you give an offer to the seller, you get to give it to the seller and the seller's agent. Hi, Elaine. Um, oh, I'm doing deals with the elderly. When you're doing deals with the elderly, it is really hard because like right now, I'm dealing with my mom. That's why I couldn't come on earlier today. And you know, she thinks that things happen just magically and I can only do so much in a day. But anyway, um, the digital thing, I know what you're talking about, Elaine, when you're trying, the older people, they don't know, they don't have email. Like my mom doesn't have email, she doesn't have a cell phone. So if you're dealing with somebody who's downsizing and getting a smaller home, um, no internet, no printer, no nothing, you're going to their home. So like when I do reverse mortgages, I make an appointment with them, I drive out to their house, I do a lot of paperwork, and with, when you're dealing with people who don't have any emails or internet or printing ability, you're gonna be going to their house a couple times. And I wanna say that with a reverse mortgage, I'm at their house anywhere from five to seven times. And that's okay. And you just have to slow way down and work with them and understand that they didn't have computers when they were younger. So 
the difference between digital and printing it out, you know, on those reverse mortgages, we got to print out packages like this and go through them with your client and have patience and do the right thing for your, do the right thing for your clients because what goes around comes around. So let's see. Um, all real estate contracts need to be in writing. Okay. You need to know that in writing or digital form and signed to be enforced. Okay. If they're not signed, they're not enforceable. Traditionally printed contracts were typed and signed on paper. Today in California, we access through zip forms. We love zip forms. When zip forms first came out, we did not love zip forms. Zip forms was a pain in the butt because I felt like a guinea pig because, you know, I would use the zip forms and I'd get to understand it and know how to use it. And then the next time I went on it, it was changed. And I'm like, are you kidding me? They changed it again. So it was really frustrating. But for you new real estate agents, it's much easier because they pretty much do not change the zip forms that much anymore. They'll change it when we have a new contract that we need to pull up, but you just go ahead and pull up the new contract. It will auto populate and you'll be able to do what you need to do. So going on. So zip forms are the electronic version of the California Association of Realtor paper forms that can be downloaded online for free as part of our yearly um, association fee. So it's kind of funny that that says for free because back in the day when you needed a purchase contract, you had to drive to the board office and, and purchase a packet of purchase contracts. Now, if you had an, um, another agent in your office that had a packet, they may let you borrow one, but then you'd have to replace it because you had to buy the purchase contracts. You had to buy all the other contracts. You had to know which contracts. I never forget, you know, those filing things that are like this on the wall with shelves. You had to go, okay, I need the agency agreement. I need the purchase contract. You know, I need this disclosure. I need all these things. And then you had the pack and then you went to your client's house and they had carbon paper in between them. So your client had a hard, really hard like right on it and then you broke it apart and gave it to them. Now we have the zip forms and when you went to the board office, you had to pay for the contracts. Now the zip forms are included in our association. It says, yep, I would process files with the carbon ink. Ooh, between, the, yeah, that carbon stuff is really a drag. So we're moving forward in contracts. I wanted to make sure I got on today. Tomorrow I will be on time at 9.30. And we will do 9.30 to 10. It's usually 10.15 or so to get you more information on contracts and what's happening. Um, let me see if there's anything else I can add for today. So we're talking about doing it digitally versus doing it on a paper form. It says download forms can be filed in, a, in as a file on your Apple Android device. From there, the forms can be printed out in black or filled in for your client to sign. The filled in contract forms can be emailed to your client on a smartphone or computer device. The newer digital way has saved you time and um, with the agents, it's, it's a speed in negotiation. And so it, it all is much better, but the problem is, is like Elaine said, when you have an older client, it's really, really difficult to try to help them learn how to use their computer or their Android, or even those, most of them have like cheap flip loans, flip phones or whatever they have. So the next part of this chapter, so I can just finish up, is a copy of the purchase contract. However, um, I'm not sure, I have to check, I'm gonna call on this book. This is the 15th edition and it has the 10 page purchase contract. And I don't know if the next edition has the larger contract. But like I said, you could go to the California Association of Realtor website and get some help with getting a copy of a purchase contract. And then it goes on that we're gonna talk about the deposits and the covenants and contingencies and conditions tomorrow. So be here, I'll help you learn as much as I can about real estate. If you wanna be in the class tonight, tonight is from 6, uh, 6 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. You have to sign up. If you don't sign up, you can't get the link. And that's the real estate exam prep this week. And then next week will be the mortgage exam um, prep. Now next week, the mortgage one is Monday, Wednesday, Friday. The real estate one is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So if you have questions, feel free to contact me. I look forward to helping you in your real estate career. Have a great day. Thank you for following and commenting.